Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is AI, the behavior tree decorator nodes. This is going to be a fairly long video. We're going to cover what the decorator node is, but we're not going to go into specific detail about each of the decorator nodes. Each of the decorator nodes will have their own video with an example showing how they're used. So let's go ahead and get started. So the decorator node is basically a conditional node. It's intended to allow you to determine if you should or should not do something. Basically, you can kind of think it is of it as an if node. If it is successful, then it's, it's going to continue on with the composite node, which is our sequence or our selector, and then allow a task to run. So let's go ahead and look at one of these and check out the basics. So you can access the decorator nodes, the pre-built ones, by right-clicking on something that can accept a decorator node. Now if you notice when I right-click anywhere in here, we don't see decorator nodes anywhere. Well, decorator nodes, because like I said, they're basically an if, they determine if something can be done, they must be attached to something. They may be attached to a composite node, or they may be attached to a task itself. Now, the decorator nodes are these blue nodes here. As you can see, I have four of them currently here. Now you can choose to not use decorator nodes. In this case, I'm simply using a service attached to a selector so that way this service is always running. Underneath that I have decorator nodes that determine whether or not I should do something. And you can stack more than one decorator node. For example I could add another decorator here for Blackboard and now I'd have a cooldown and a Blackboard based condition for decorators. Now when you have multiple decorators it is going to go from top to bottom vertically and if one fails, then everything below it is going to fail as well. You can reorganize them simply by dragging and dropping, as you can see here. And there we go. So, the basics of the decorator nodes. Now, if you notice, I have five different, well, I have three technically different nodes here. A decorator example, blackboard-based condition, and a cooldown. All of them will have different details that determine how the decorator fires. So for in this example for this one we have a flow control section, a blackboard section, and then the description section. And the description section just allows you to change the name so from like blackboard base condition to you know is the player valid and now it's is the player valid. So that's what the no name is for. Now the things that are pretty much common that I'm going to try to cover in this video is the way flow works with decorators in terms of observing and aborting as well as accessing the blackboard. The section you'll probably find common between some of the nodes is going to be our blackboard section. The blackboard section, for example in this one, is where you would set up what key in our blackboard right now here's our key for player what key we're actually going to do something with in this case I only have player so it's the only option but if I have more than one that is how you would set what we're doing with it now specific things like for our blackboard decorator node here are things like our ob notify observer observer aborts the key query the blackboard key I'm not going to go into details because that will be covered in the actual Blackboard decorator node itself. But one thing that is important between all of our decorators is understanding how the flow works, which is right here where our observer aborts section is. Some of them may have four settings in here, none, self, lower priority, and both. And some of them may only have something such as none, lower priority. And then this one, for example, has none and self. So it's important to understand how these work. So let's go ahead and look at how this one works in terms of the flow, and we'll see how it's broken, and I'll explain the different flows. So if I run this, and I go back to here, we're gonna see it flowing like this. Now when this one fails, 
what's going to happen is it's going to go backwards up the chain and then it's going to try to go down because I'm using a selector. Remember the selector set up where if the left one fails, it'll then try the right one. Now with the way I've designed this behavior tree, it's going to fail no matter what. It's going to get stuck at the top and nothing's going to happen. Because my decorators are failing and not allowing the task to run. So in this instance, I have a decorator here asking, is the player valid? Is my player set? And if we look in the bottom right, we have our player key and it's currently set to none. Because it's set to none, up here under observer aborts, I have it set to none. That means it's going to ab abort nothing that is going on. Now you ask yourselves, well, it failed, so what does that mean? How is that true? What is going on here? Well, let me get rid of this decorator example and show just a plain, simple sequence along the left and right. I'm going to change my weight here to something ridiculous, like 50 seconds. So in theory, how this works is it's going to go down. This is going to set the player. This is going to see if the player is currently set. And if so, it's going to wait 50 seconds. Now, because I have observed aborts none here, what you're going to see happen is this is going to sit here and it's going to start waiting for 50 seconds. Down here we see our player and our player is now currently none. Well, this one is checking for the player and the player has changed. Why are we still waiting? Why are we still down here? Well, this is going to f continue running for our 50 seconds. Once the 50 seconds is up, it's going to go back up here and finish successfully. Then it's going to go back up here, and this is going to continue running. Now, the next time this runs through here, this sequence node is going to check this. This is going to be invalid the next time we run, because our player is now set to none, and it's going to abort. And it's going to fail here, and it's going to try this side. So, what if we want when the player is no longer valid? Because that's the whole point of this. If the player is no longer valid, we don't want to do anything. What if we wanted this to stop? Well, that's what our aborting is for. So... If we have it set to abort self, you're going to notice one thing immediately. We have a little node, note here that says node aborts self. And you're going to see this color coding based on this. None. Nothing's going to happen. Self. Everything that's color coded is going to abort when this decorator fires. So let's go and run this again. And this time you should see when our condition is met, which is going to be after approximately 5 seconds, this is going to change to none. Now you notice this is no longer waiting. You'll notice a red thing here because it failed. And it's going to travel back up and it's going to continue trying to do what it can. Now in this case, because I'm using the selector node, this left chain fails, so it's going to try the right chain. Now my right chain has another condition in here, checking if the player's set. It's failing, so it fails back up. And now nothing can run and we're basically stuck. Our player AI can't do anything. And that's kind of what we wanted there. So that is what the observer aborts self does. It's going to abort itself and anything below it. Now the next option is lower priority. And you're going to notice an immediate change. We now have this in a blue. Well, a darker blue. This is no longer colored. And you're now going to notice this is colored by our darker blue. Lower priority means basically anything to the right, because we remember we go from left to right when we execute. Higher priority, lower priority, and if I had more, even lower priority. So actually, let's show that in use. I hate moving these things. We'll add another, we'll add a selector node here. And then we'll go ahead and check this. And you'll notice now the selector node is dark blue, because it would abort as well. So in this case, if you had multiple things running along your chain, along your behavior tree, let's say you had this branch here running and this branch here running. So let's say you had everything that was highlighted running. When this aborts in this case, this is go ahead and run this. We're going to see everything that was highlighted and in that abort sequence abort. Now, if you notice here, it's now set to none, but this is still running. Well, again, it's set to lower priority. When we see the highlight here, these are the only ones that are going to abort. This is not selected. It's not going to stop. It's only going to stop everything else. In order to stop everything, we have the both. Now, if you notice, we have nodes aborted by mode self and lower priority, and now everything is going to stop when this fails. 
if we run it again to show you, you're now going to see after five seconds, this node will fail. It's going to abort this, and it's going to abort everything else. So there you go. That's what our observer abort section is for. Now, that is something that is going to be common for all of your decorators if it uses the observer and the observer aborts. So that's something to keep in mind. That's why it's covered in the decorator video itself. None means nothing's going to happen when it fails. It will eventually stop it from working once your tasks or any conditions under it are met, but nothing will immediately happen. Self, just itself and anything below it will stop. Lower priority, anything to the right of it on that same composite node is going to fail. Both means both itself and lower priority are going to fail. Okay, so what else do we have here? The Blackboard key I've mentioned is references to your Blackboard key. And then other things are going to be individualized, which will be covered in their videos. Cooldown has this cooldown section. Blackboard base condition has this notify observer section, which will be covered. One thing that I haven't covered is not only can you use the built-in decorators, you can create your own decorator itself up here in the new decorator section. When you do that, it's going to ask you to which parent base class you want to use. In this case, you're probably going to use the decorator blueprint base. I've gone ahead and actually created an example for this. So let me figure out where I put it. This is a decorator. Okay, what did I call it? I called it BT decorator example. So let's find BT decorator example. So here's our custom decorator. This is a decorator I made. And if we look at it, it's pretty much duplicating what our existing Blackboard decorator does. Let me go ahead and put it in here. Let's add a decorator and we'll set this to our decorator example. Now, how I've set this decorator example up is it works just like any other event graph. You have something that's gonna happen and then something's going to be returned. All of the functions you can use are can be overridden right here. You have your tick, if the observer was deactivated, if the observer was activated, when execution starts on this node, when execution finishes on this node. And execution is when it runs through here. Observing is, in this case, for example, when we set up an observer, and that is always constantly checked. So, for example, it's basically a, an event dispatcher. It goes, it's a callback. It's a notification. You're observing something. It's whether it deactivates or activates it. And then whether or not this node gets executed on the start, basically begin play, or finish, which is end play. And the last one is this perform condition check, which is handy. This basically allows you to do something and return back a true or false value. So in this example, basically, I have an actor to check Blackboard key. That means I'm going to have a Blackboard key here I'm going to set up that I want to assign to this variable called actor to check. So I'm checking that value. I'm getting that Blackboard value as an actor because what I want to do is compare that actor to nothing. I want to see if that actor is not equal to nothing, if it's not null, if it's a valid actor. And then I'm returning the result. So now when I go back to our behavior tree, and I was to pull up this example, by default you're going to find it set to nothing. I change this to my player, because that's my player blackboard value. And then basically I tell it if I want to absorb, abort itself or none. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to abort self. So in this case here, even though we have this set up here and it's going to abort everything below it, let's go ahead and remove this. And let's say we want it just on the task itself and we don't actually want it on the sequence node. Now if we run this, we should see a very similar result to before. I've basically recreated this Blackboard check, but in this case I did it using my own settings or any of my own checks. So as you saw in here, after the time, it went to none. My check inside of here is basically checking to see if the actor is equal to not equal, <laughs> not equal to not equal, equal to nothing, and then it returns the value of true or false. In here I have it set to abort itself if that condition is true. And then you have an inverse c condition in here as well. So for example, if I check this and I ran it, it's going to pretty much fail immediately because this is going to start off as false because I didn't have that check in place. So that's how you can use a custom decorator. And of course, there's many other things you can do with the custom decorator. 
You could have it do a line of sight check, for example, or maybe a distance check. Maybe you have a move to node or move to sequence. And after your player, every time your player moves, maybe you want to make sure it aborts within a certain distance. Maybe you want to make sure you can always see your player. Maybe you have it do a line of sight check every certain amount of time. And your service here says, you know, your service runs every half a second. Your service is going to run two checks. It's going to assign a player that it can see, and then it's going to assign a line of sight, whether your AI can see your player. And down here in your move to task, you're going to have a line of sight check decorator. And if it's true, it's going to continue moving. And if it's false, it's going to stop moving. So you can have it where it works like that, where if, as soon as your player gets out of line of sight and it reruns the service, it updates that Blackboard variable. Your custom node says, oh, well, okay, they're out of line of sight. Let's go ahead and stop that. And then you can have it abort the move to task. There are plenty of obvious uses to it, but that's a quick example of a decorator that you can create yourself. So that's going to cover it up for the most part. Like I said, there are individual videos covering each decorator node that comes with the system built in. As you can see, there's a list of them. You can create your own custom decorator. And remember, decorators are basically, you can think of them as basic if statements. They are conditionals. The intention is to allow the things below it to happen if these settings are valid. That's it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.